Takashi is a public health specialist who has worked with NGOs all around the world, a lot in Africa, but all around the world. And Francisca is a security advisor, a member of the Swiss military, and she leads trauma-informed safety trainings. Thank you for being with us today. Kashi, could we start with you? We'd love to hear a bit more about your work. Sure, thank you very much, Melissa. And I'm really just to say, I'm so happy to be here in the, the conference and to listen to everything and trying to see, well, being invited to share my experience and also to see what I can contribute from my side with my background uh, to the uh, conversations. So indeed, I'm actually a pharmacist by background with a public health specialist, so far away from um, from, uh, from the SE community at least a long time ago. And I've been working on access to medicine and so on for the past 20 years, indeed, mostly in Africa with NGOs and with UN organizations and with academia and with all that. And now as a consultant on training, teaching, capacity building and evaluation, just so you know a little bit where I'm coming from. Um, and indeed, I'm almost an SEP, hopefully within the next couple of weeks or month or so. And uh, also working with uh, refugees without papers, so who have been in Holland for a longer time, already giving SE sessions, trauma sessions in Amsterdam for the past year or so. So that's a bit of where my experience there comes in as well. And I've been uh, been thinking a bit on where, what to share, which would might be most interesting for this forum proactively and then see what kind of questions might come up. Um, the first thing is, well, there's basically, I, I came across two examples for me. The first one that might have a few lessons from my experience, uh, which might be interesting for any future interventions. And the second one is more of a yeah, some questions actually that's really come up and even more so while listening to all the conversations here. Um, the first one, some lessons, it's just basically I'd like to highlight it with a project that I very much do believe in. There's many projects that I'm evaluating that I believe a little less in and I see there's good intentions coming in but few impact and little impact being made or actually harm being done but this is like a positive example right going to the resourcing <laughs> the, the positive part um 18 years ago I've uh, I was working with MSF Doctors Without Borders and a friend of mine had started a small NGO in Kenya because he saw that the children there, also adults, but especially children, uh, the many had HIV, could not get access to medicine. So he basically asked me to help as a pharmacist with the pediatric ARVs. And, and so we basically started, I started being involved from that point onwards. And since then, the project has really evolved uh, with basically very much demand driven and education for the children that have no parents, you know, because they died because of HIV, water projects and so on. So it's been very much from the ground up growing. There's a, actually a mental health component right now as well focusing to provide support to the grannies supporting the children with HIV. So it's been a very organic project with a small budget, very much working well. There's a few volunteers internationally that are basically volunteering their time and for the rest, very much locally owned and, and working with people from there who are actually reporting to the Ministry of Health, reporting to Ministry of Education and so on. Um, and what I love so much about this project and what some of the things that have come up with what some other people are saying as well is that it's very much locally owned, demand driven, um, culturally sensitive, obviously, because it's locally owned. Yeah, so it's very much the need and how it's being implemented is is is. Uh, is dictated or decided dictated sounds too hard decided upon by the people themselves. 
Um, we have been linking a lot with, well, Ministry of Health and Education for one, but also with other organizations and initiatives that are going on in the fields in that particular area. And I would say, I can't say without ego, but with relatively little ego of not wanting to plant our flag, but wanting to, yeah, to be, to be really there. I was really happy that Elsbeth showed the impact of what she was doing or what she what she's been doing the before and after because again I think this is also really something that we've been doing and it's not always always um, happening so to see are we making uh, a difference and how do we measure that and I really appreciate that in more emergency settings it's sometimes very much more difficult to measure but. I and this is also where now my evaluation background comes in to see the the uh, the unintended consequences that can happen as well, positive hopefully and sometimes negative, or the do no harm principle, which I think is the most important thing to adhere to in any kind of interventions that we do. And uh, yeah, I just wrote down what Sandra was saying, just parachuting people in. This is not what we do. <laughs> and Imke was talking about uh, the power struggles. And I think with this project, we, we really kind of managed to stay out of power struggles. So for me in this project, long term, we, we have a relatively small budget and so on. It, it's, 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 it has so many beautiful lessons for any interventions. <laughs> So that's one. Um, Ashley, and, do you yeah. mind? Do you mind sharing yeah. the budget number with us? Is that appropriate? Yeah. It was blown no, 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 away. absolutely. No, no, absolutely. So we have a budget of seventy-five to one hundred thousand per year, and I'm evaluating projects of a. Uh, oh, I think somebody starts screen sharing, but. Anyway, I think um, I, I'm evaluating budget, uh, an, another project in Kenya right now, which has 40 million pounds over a four-year period. Oh, Angela, you I have to stop have sharing to... your screen. Or Isa, <laughs> it's one of one of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, Sorry, you said. Yeah. So it's so now. it's so it's actually so it's actually relative, very small compared to the impact that we have and the and the and the long term. And it's all private donors that are coming in. I mean, they're all people out of pocket. So you know, small, small. We just set up the Dutch version of this organization, Vida. It's called. It's the 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 Spanish word for life and also HIV uh, yeah so so in that respect it's it's really uh, be beautiful and again not just because of this project but because what I see is very often not happening and that for me it's very encouraging to see that it is possible in this way to really make an impact over a longer period of time yeah. There's something SE teaches us too, I think, about going in. Yeah, slow and small and yeah, 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 it's really, yes. Yeah. Of not working out from a place of our high activation energy, but really a place of regulation mm. and doing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not necessarily wanting to to try to achieve something. I mean, we do, obviously, but not kind of like working towards planting the flags and this is us. And within two years, we have to reach these indicators, but more to see, to kind of go with what's there and what's what basically what's coming up. Yeah. From the field. So in that respect, it's very nice that you ask these questions because we can really make the make the connection. What's what's coming up and to to kind of respond to what's coming up. Indeed. Yeah. So in that respect, it's a very nice uh, analogy. Yeah. Well, no, I'm you going. Yeah. Yes. On your list to share. Yeah, go yeah. Ahead. I also want to bring Francesca in to share a little bit and then have a conversation. Do you want to go through a couple more things or should we bring her in? I I'm have one about. more one more small example, and that is actually more of a question that is very close to me, and especially after listening to everyone, 
I've been working quite a bit in South Sudan and South Sudan would not qualify for the SE task force to jump in and, you know, help like the call for Syria, uh, Turkey, I saw now, even though it's not an acute emergency, but it's like an ongoing emergency of war after war after compounded trauma of people and, you know, generations upon generations. And even when I was still working on access to medicine and doing trainings on supply chain all over the all over South Sudan with the people from there, and I was not so sensitized yet to kind of look for trauma, it's so palpable, it's so feelable, it's everywhere. And the the what Elspeth just mentioned, after six months, it's difficult to intervene. And I heard like Imka, I just wrote it down. If if people even would have come a couple of weeks earlier, for me, one of the main reasons why I started to really get into trauma work and wanting to do SE is to kind of work in these kind of settings. And it's really a question for me, what can we do? And I'd be very curious to hear any kind of experience from others. Yeah, what can we do in a... I would say subacute setting where people are, have have had trauma over well sometimes generations and it's in the system so much with the kind of SE task force or with kind of you know interventions to to do something and because the need is so big and it's 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 an open question for me what so, I'd be very uh, very curious to hear other people's experiences. From. That's a very important question. We were talking about doing a webinar too on collective trauma and intergenerational trauma, but entire society mm. can bear trauma in, in specific particular ways. And how do we work with this when we come in? And yeah. 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 Thanks. Thank you, Kashi. And thank you for the work that you're doing around the world. I'm so glad that you found SE and migrated from <laughs> pharmaceutical. From I'm pharma. just booing, I'm doing both right now. I mean, so let's see where, I end up, where, where I'll end up in five years time. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Francisca, I wish we had more military officers who are also SEPs. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> Super. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you very much, Melissa, and thank you all. It's very inspiring and touching all the different inputs here. And I guess I bring a little bit a different aspect as well, even though it's a very personal one at, one at the end. So I'm a security advisor. I'm working for international and national um, non-governmental organizations, sometimes also for the Swiss government. government. And I travel all over the world to workshops with the people there to analyze risks, to see how we can mitigate these risks and how to plan in case something happens. Um, the link to Ukraine, I have been twice in Ukraine now during the last year, but also before I traveled regularly since 2015 to the East to develop security plans there with the local Caritas offices along the, the, the buffer zone. So that, that is the connection to the task force. However, I travel to other countries as well. I figured out many years ago in Mali, when I was talking to 40 people from Mali and three internationals, that um, risks to trigger um, past experiences, and I wanted to be better equipped in case something is triggered in a person. I wanted to better understand how our nervous system works, so I could also support the person in that moment. That is the reason why I did an SE. I'm an SE practitioner now. I'm not doing any therapy with people. I try to be regulated myself because it starts with me and then I try in my trainings and Isa and Elspeth know my trainings so I try to bring this regulation into the training groups and also try to structure my trainings according SE not thousands of powerpoints a soft voice sometimes very clear 
so people can orientate. They always know where we are. And I think I'm also a very positive and light person, so it never gets too heavy when we talk about security, which easily can happen if we always concentrate on the bad side of life. But there is a very, very beautiful um, side of life as well. That is why I'm an SCP and a security advisor. But I would like to share with you two examples from my life. Um, not my uh, private life, but my uh, business life when I travel. So the one first example is Kabul, Afghanistan, 2016. I was there to do security consultancy and training for an international NGO, but mostly staff were national. We did risk analysis, we talked the whole day, the whole week, and it was really war a lot. And one evening I thought, okay, I am going to meditate because I have to calm down. And I was sitting on, on the floor and the carpet had this nice pillow. The ones who know Afghanistan know also the, the fabrics you can find there. Oh, I also have to say there was the sound of hoovering helicopters all the time. And also the ones who have been there, they can hear the sound. And that contributes to the whole stress you, you feel all day long, also working with security or working whatever you work. So I try to meditate, sit down on that pillow, breathing and thought, OK. And I realized it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. The pictures are not coming. Normally they come where I connect with all the th different things I connect when I meditate, nothing. It was like dry. I was like dry there in the desert alone. Nothing happened. And then I thought, okay. And suddenly I had this picture. My nervous system was hanging there, clinching on this bar and wouldn't let go. And I thought, oh, why? And I realized it's to keep me safe because I could not be in this relaxed, chilled mood because I'm a security advisor. I was alone in that compound together with the guards. I had to be switched on. And that was actually to keep me safe, not to, I don't know, to do something bad to me, but to keep me safe. And realizing that was such a blessing because it was like, wow, body, nervous system, you're doing something good to me. You're protecting actually my life. So yes, that, um, that's the first example I wanted to share with you. And the second example is Lebanon, Beirut 2006, the one who follow conflicts and working conflicts. That was the summer when Israel was bombing South Lebanon, but also South Beirut. I was there with the Swiss team to evacuate the Swiss citizens, the ones who haven't been evacuated yet, and also to do first humanitarian actions for the internally displaced people who came from the south to around Beirut. So I had a beautiful um, hotel room. I had a rucksack with a helmet on top with the body armor. In case something happened, I would have to run during the night. Um, I had a beautiful window in front of the window, a building with a cross. And every night you could hear the airplanes flying over Beirut, bombs, and then this black smoke in front of my window. So either I didn't sleep in the night because I was waiting for the bombing, or I didn't sleep because it was bombing. But nights were pretty disturbed. Um, yes, obviously. So it was also the time where it was 1st of August in Switzerland. 1st of August is our national day where we use lots of fireworks and everybody looks to the sky and oh, so beautiful and all these little boom, boom, boom. So that was the same time. So there also something matched with, with airplanes bombing Beirut and our, our national day. So I came home. And um, the year passed, it was 1st of August, then 2007, a year later. And already in the morning, it started boom, boom, boom with these fireworks. Uh, and I start feeling how my whole body start to vibrate. 
And I was so activated. And I said, whoa, whoa. and I, obviously I knew why, because I'm a little bit aware of myself and my surrounding, or a bit, a lot. So I realized, well, that is because of Beirut. However, it went on and on. And I won went for a walk and still remember was sitting down at the river on, on a bench and thought, okay, now I call my best mate. And he's a British ex-military, um, has been on many missions abroad. And I called him and said, mate, my body's going crazy with these fireworks. And I said, Francisco, I know exactly what, you, what you're saying because I have the same. And even when a box is dropping and does this sound, I'm jumping. I said, and it felt like, whoa, there is somebody who understands what I'm talking about. And that's what you were saying um, before. We need little communities who understand um, because there we can lean on, we don't have to explain, we can be who we are, and that is just so healing and so helping in, in these moments. Um, yes, these are my two examples, and then this now story resonates so deeply with me. When I came back from two years in Afghanistan, I was the same way. And I lived three blocks from where they shoot off the fireworks for our Independence Day. And it was too much. Um, and but but the same resonates with me of um, my understanding of my intro to the trauma world. You all know is that trauma tries to separate us. Yeah, it tries to pull you into isolation. And when I do, when I asked for help, when I reached out to a friend, I got back connected back in. I think it's a repeat of an echo of what Imco was saying at the beginning of the importance of connection. Um, it, okay. and, and yeah, and then somehow that really helps as a resource to, to reach out to folks and say, are you feeling this too for me? I have my my WhatsApp group of my four best friends from Afghanistan and I can send them anything, anytime and they understand me and we can connect. And it's so deeply meaningful to my, to my process of staying healthy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kashi, what is coming to you as we're having this conversation? About anything, not about this topic. Uh-huh, yeah. Well, when Francesca was sharing and also when other people were sharing, I'm, I was actually asking myself at the time that, that I was working in the South Sudan and DRC, I lived and worked as well, which is also not uh, the nicest, uh, nicest of nicest uh, context, put it that way. <clears throat> um, I, I wrote down the three S's from uh, Liana. And I think, I mean, I was very much focused on Seva and a little bit of satsang, but I was completely disregarding my own sadhana at the time. And it's it's very interesting actually to hear right now and to reflect back. I think as, as the practitioners, we are more aware of the fact that we need to, you know, take care of ourselves, even if we don't do it. Yeah, but at least there's a little bit more awareness of the fact that we need to be resourced in order to resource others and support others best. Um, I, I, uh, well, I, I think on, to be very honest, I managed more with uh, with alcohol and uh, to to resource myself at the time than uh, in a more healthy way. So it's just very interesting for me listening to what Francesca was saying and also going back to, I mean, what other people are saying to kind of realize for myself the lack of awareness on resourcing on the three S's, put it that way. And as I mean, as international development work, we're all helpers anyhow. I mean, mostly, <laughs> most we should be mostly. And um Perhaps also to 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 see the well, that's like a whole other opportunity, right? Of of, of like group to to work with of people not be working directly with trauma themselves, but also in aid work and in the kind of you know that 
there the, 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 the awareness there is so so low yeah. so can you both imagine building a community of international aid workers who get what we're talking about and are doing their helping from a place of regulation mm-hmm. or the mm-hmm. eye in the midst of the storm instead of doing it from a place of activation mm-hmm. it would mm-hmm. transform our industry yeah, yeah. absolutely 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 yeah and and I know you know what I'm talking about there because we had a little pre-talk <laughs> so so yeah yeah absolutely yeah and that would have a spin-off effect obviously huh? yeah peace building work peace building work that's yeah, from yeah. Place of uh, inner peace. it would transform the entire yeah. industry it so yeah. I would like to start a revolution with the two of you and others in this room <laughs> <laughs> I mean We'll yeah. make it into a little sub uh, subgroup of the task force, right? <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. it's also really, and and we talked about, or you talked about this before, I can't remember if it was Imke also or Sandra, being vulnerable, being human, just being us without proving 500,000 there and this and that. So just be in some moments, I think the best would just be to sit with these international people. And I work with them and with some, I have to say with Elspe together, we have a security training where the fifth day is resilience and stress management. So because we have understood, we have to bring it together. So just be no activism in, 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 in the meaning of being active, but be there, connect with your in front person and just open your heart and be, I can't repeat it. Just be, don't do anything. Just be, be regulated by yourself and be. And, and I believe it's possible. Oh, I cut you off. Yes, no. And the other point I have to say here, because I'm a security advisor, of course, this all is much easier when you're in a safe country in like, if you're here in Switzerland, feeling safe and being is obviously much more, uh, much easier than being in a context where, where even your security, not, not just inner feeling safe is, is, threatened but your security is threatened mm. and I think that is what adds to the work with the international development people that this the context as such is not a secure one or a safe yeah. one so we have the outside in and the inside mm-hmm. and yeah this we should keep yeah, in mind. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Here's what I would like to propose we do now because we are eight minutes behind schedule, which is fine. We're doing great for a packed program. Um, I hope you all feel at least that we're moving together in a, in a regulated way. I would like to um, actually open breakout rooms at the moment for anybody that would like to continue this conversation with Kashi or Francisca. The breakout rooms will actually be open while we're going to go into our next session directly with Angela, who's going to be talking about um, the wonderful work she does with refugee kids in schools and how she's using SE in her classroom. Hi, Angela. Um, But I'll open the breakout rooms if you would like to go and continue this conversation with Francisca and Kashi. Does that work for all of us? Yeah. Um, and I also put Rachi, Elsbeth, and Sandra's rooms open again because I heard that some of you were sad that they got closed earlier. I don't know if they want to go or not, but if they do, then <laughs> you'll see them. If they're not there, just come back and join us here. Is that good? Okay, let me introduce you to this wonderful teacher who is in front of me. <laughs> Angela is um, well, we met through a quite through an inquiry that you sent to the task force. You were using the scope protocol that SEI helped to develop in your classroom. And you said, can is it going to be available in Arabic and Urdu soon? To I have students from countries that are asking for this. And I don't think we got back to you to say that um the Arabic translation was just published right before the earthquake, actually, that hit Syria that desperately needs it. It was just published on the SEI 
website. And so um, we'll make sure you get a copy of it for your students. But I'm so happy to hear today about the work that you're doing in your classroom. <laughs> so th thank you very much. I'm, I'm very happy about this Arabic version now. We can start with that. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I prepared a little bit. Uh, uh, I have to see. Um, maybe Zadura can help me. Um, uh, I have this uh, presentation. Um, if you can see it, maybe. It's not really. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we can see it. Oh, okay. I just leave it in this format. I mean, it's not uh, that. Um, so, um, uh, yes, I, I'm a teacher. I'm uh, teaching at a middle school near Frankfurt on Main in Germany. And it's an inner city school with many, many multicultural students. Um, yes. And so my school is expanding and we now also have a primary school. And since November, I was suddenly placed as a class teacher in such a primary school uh, class and as an intensive German class teacher. So in my class, there are only refugees or um, economic refugees coming from all over the world. Um, I have five Ukraine students and one girl from Russia, one from Kazakhstan and North Macedonia, from Croatia, Jordan and Pakistan. So it's very lively and um, uh, they all have together that they do not speak any German. Uh, they did not speak any German until November uh, last year. So... Um, how do I teach them? Yes, <laughs> of course, I had my SE uh, training. Uh, I finished it uh, 2017. And so um, let's see how I can do this now. Oh. Uh, and um, and uh, so I use many SE tools um, in my in my class besides regular pedagogical things and I find it very very helpful and it really makes a difference uh, knowing about the nervous system and not knowing enough about the nervous system so um, for me it's kind of exciting to do this and I try to um, uh, show this yeah this is my uh, very first uh, page I want I am, um, yes, I, I like to share this uh, drawing with you. I have some drawings, of course, because of lack of language. And um, this drawing is from my um, nine year old uh, student from Ukraine. And um, yeah, you see everything. You see the grounding, you see the surrounding, the containment, you see the rainbow, and you see the two balloons and these two persons. And uh, she drew this. Uh, uh, she said, I'm, I'm me, uh, as my name is up here. Uh, uh, this is uh, me. And uh, this is the other teacher who just um, is being placed in my uh, class because my headmaster thought I'm because of my SE tools I'm using at school the class is not really strict uh, like sitting there and um, doing very strict um, class uh, it's not like that but I look after the uh, regulation I learned with uh, Ale Duarte a lot and um, I, I look after the Yes, after the nervous system. So um, the kids sometimes are going some places in the class and moving around and so on. So this strict teacher is now placed in my um, class and she has to look uh, after what uh, that I should uh, be more strict. And that's the drawing what the um, Ukraine student drew. So um, and I when I saw this drawing, I was happy because I thought, OK, um, uh, we will make it. I, I, we can have the um, containment also for this new strict teacher to come. Yeah. So um, mm, uh, three things I learned during these exciting three, more than three months now. Um, 
actually this first thing I, I already learned before it's everything has a meaning which was um, said by one of my SE teachers in, in Germany. And everything has a meaning in, in child's work. In the classroom, when the student is hiding under a table, or if someone tipping backwards with a chair, it's kind of disturbing the lesson in a regular teaching um, method way. I mean, when you're a teacher, you say, oh, you get out of the table. It's not the place to, you cannot learn there. Or another is tipping backwards with the chair. You say, oh, stop it. Why do you do it? It's, it's not good. Or one is drawing instead of writing or, or listening or something. But being a teacher with SE tools, it's, it's, uh, it's to observe and see that all everything has a meaning and all doings have a meaning. And you, 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 you just stop categorizing and um, punishment, there is no punishment in, in my uh, class. Uh, but um, maybe I, I go and ask, ah, is it nice to hide under the table? You like it there? Uh, because I know, I mean, if a Ukraine student is hiding under the table as a game, of course it has a meaning and it's, it, it feels safe for her then there. And she takes the book and, and, uh, or, uh, and a notebook and writes under the table the assignment. So that's okay. Uh, um, yeah. And um, uh, second, uh, I also learned, this is quite new, make it flow, the learning will come. This uh, is uh, from Ali Duarte and it's just, I think, three or four weeks ago. Uh, I didn't know what to do when the strict teacher, I told you before, when, when she was placed into my class, what can I do? And, and, and I have to be strict like um yeah I, I have to forget all my nervous system tools and uh, um yeah but no he said no just make it flow and the learning will come so this uh, really helped me um seeing about learning blockades of my students the students are in this class they are from age uh, six until um until 10 but the other students are until 18, so yeah. And um, yeah, so I'm, I, I hold this saying and uh, I first make it flow. Um, so what else did I learn? Co-regulation and self-regulation does help in schools too, not only in, uh, um, in a practice or in a therapeutic uh, surrounding, but uh, in school, uh, uh, if you know self-regulation, co-regulation, orientation and all these presence and resources, uh, pendulation, then the safety comes and they start to learn. And I really can say this, especially this girl from Kazakhstan, she has, no, no, sorry, North Macedonia. She had really had, she did not have war um, tra traumatized, but she was really, she was only talking English when she came into my class. And then now because of all these, um, yeah, resources. Uh, she only speaks German any, any uh, uh, now, and it's really nice. Yeah. So um, this is kind of <laughs> advertising. Uh, uh, there are some other teachers also in, in the German uh, somatic experiencing. Uh, so we are eight authors and uh, last two years we worked together on this book, which is called something like body oriented stress reduction at schools uh, to overcome learning blockades and to make more have more uh, concentration tools in the in the uh, class. Mm, and uh, it's for teachers and uh, yeah we just uh, uh, finished the work uh, uh, this last Friday so now um, it will be published uh, in German only right now in German only because it's German publishing company and it will be published in, in April so we hope that then more teachers getting access to um, nervous system tools and um, getting some stress reduction because schools are such a big place of stress. 
and uh, thinking about what uh, what is the difference or is there a difference between war traumatized kids and just regular traumatized kids or any kids in the classroom? Uh, I really find there is a difference. I have never, uh, I really haven't, uh, uh, well, first, no, I have to say, in my school, they are multicultural kids, 99% multicultural kids from all over the world. So. Um, we have also many traumatized kids from all kinds of backgrounds and poor also, not, not very rich kids. But these war traumatized kids from the Ukraine, it's something very different for me. Um, I, in the first two weeks, in the first three weeks, maybe one to three weeks, they showed so many, so much pale, pale face and just being alert all the time. And, and, and these eyes so big and coldness. I was standing near them and I felt the coldness everywhere. So there this great high impact was, yeah, quite different than dysregulation of, of other types I, I mentioned, I noticed before. And but yeah. also um, the big, big, big uh, 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 resource they have. Oh my God. So they are, I, I told you already, they're hiding under the table. Of course, it's like playing with, they had to hide someplace, but they're making fun of it and they're getting into the resources. They put the <laughs> car, the, the, um, uh, we had some playing lesson and they placed the, the chairs upside down, sat on there, the boys, and they drove, boom, boom, boom. So where are you driving? I asked, where are you driving? Ah, oh, um, <clears throat> we're driving. They didn't tell me where. So I asked, mm, are you driving to Frankfurt because it's the near city? Oh, no, no, we are driving to Berlin. Okay, boom, boom. And I said, ah, it's a good drive. Yes, yes. So that was all. And, and just let them be in their playing and this fight and flight or whatever it was, they were getting into uh, playing and um, now it stopped. It, it, that was in uh, December. In, in, in January, it stopped. They're not, uh, they're playing other things now, um, but not hard driving. Angela, yes. I'm so sorry <laughs> interrupting you. Please, okay. can you uh, share this uh, pr presentation on like, make it like... <laughs> yes. Way. More visible. Yes, okay. Like this? Then the slideshow, please. Slideshow, click on slideshow. Okay. Thank Perfect. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really not. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm always in the present classroom. So, so I, I don't, e uh, even though it was COVID, I, I was always in this present. So I'm not perfect in this. Thank you for telling. So, um, yeah, so I guess uh, uh, maybe uh, I told already about this, why SE tools are good at public school. I mean, it's not a private school with some very nice containment. It's not. Um, even the headmasters I have very hard times with the uh, school administration for, um, yeah, there is no nervous system. Uh, I was told. So um, it's kind of hard, but um, dealing with the young students, especially with the refugees, I feel very much, um, I myself feel much uh, grounded when I, uh, when I teach them. And I think uh, we really can make them, their fear or sadness, which is coming now more, uh, more endurable and also aggression. Some some boy had some really bad aggression and had to go to the headmaster twice, also with his parents and so on. But um, so um, I try to bring help him bringing the aggression into healthy aggression, and uh, yeah, it 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 works slowly. It works so um, so. I really hope, yeah, this will uh, be more spreaded. 
yeah in in the teacher's world and this drawing uh, i like to share this it's made by the ukraine teacher we have the ukraine teacher she's coming twice a week to my students after the german class and one day she brought the uh, watercolor painter paint uh, watercolors with her and she herself started to draw and some of them also drew something and um so she left this drawing in the room afterwards and i thought oh i really like this because it's it's uh, for me it's like seeing the moment and uh, there are the nice flowers and the trees and maybe this is water or road i don't know and some weeds or whatever um so the presence is there is it's it's lots of work because there's a steep hill but you don't know what is going on later you don't know what is next week or maybe in one year nobody knows but right now it's um it's nice to look at so i i was really happy about this picture by the ukraine teacher because um yeah i i have told her about scope also and she really liked it she tried to um to do it once with the students. Um, I, I don't think they're doing it regularly, but he, she herself, um, it, it's it's good to, we, we always talk with each other so after the lesson. So that's nice. And uh, yes, thank you for sharing this moment. And I have one more picture I would like to, to show you. <laughs> yeah, that's from, uh, my my one nine year old student in my class uh, from Ukraine and uh, I I really like this. She gave it to me as a present and I found yeah she somehow she there's the German flag on the here in the face and these big eyes long hair and yeah maybe you notice there's there are no shoes the, the, this person is just hanging somewhere but. Um, but still, the person has a colorful rainbow uh, shirt and uh, this flag, which is kind of decorative. Yeah. So, yeah, making the moment for, for the moment, I think, to, to expand the resources, just to make it wider and um, to, to get their, the students into the resources. That's what I... Uh, try in this uh, work, daily work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Angela. The photo, the pictures that you brought are so meaningful. They're so beautiful. There's so much in it. There's a richness. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, wow. And the work that you're doing is beautiful and inspiring. I'm curious how many other educators are in the room or people whose work focuses with children. Maybe you could use your raise hand icon or wave at the screen because it's nice to, to see who else in our community is doing this type of work. I see Irina, Sasha, Rebecca Stahl. I probably missed a bunch of hands. Yeah, I saw a thumbs up. I think a lot of people uh, are, are doing this work. We had Ale Duarte come and speak. Uh, he did a wonderful webinar that's on our website, on our YouTube channel, which maybe one of my colleagues can drop in the chat for you, the link to our YouTube channel where the video is. Does anyone have um, a question for Angela before we move on? And Angela, can I put you in a breakout room in case anybody would like to talk with you? Okay. Yes, yes. Let's see if there's yes. any questions for the big group. And then in a moment, I will reopen breakout rooms in case anyone would like to speak with you directly. Does anyone have a question? Maria. And you have to unmute to ask your question. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I did. I I I, I unmuted to my son. So, uh, well, I don't have a question. I just want to thank you to the speaker I just listened to because, well, I I stayed in Ukraine, but my children they were evacuated with like my older children, 
and my younger children. So the older accompanied the youngest and they left. Uh, so I visited them twice, once uh, two months. So it's, it's, well, it's not easy. But <laughs> what she mentioned uh, about the pale faces. And so, yeah, I just want to thank you for taking care of children. Um, well, in my case, th that would be about Ukrainian children because I understand how difficult for them, for them it is. Uh, well, I talked to my daughter who is 13. And I remember uh, in cases when there is... Um, the territory of Ukraine, Ukraine is bombed. Uh, once a month, we have these days, then the whole territory of Ukraine is uh, and um, she quite often mentions me that this is the day when she doesn't want to uh, participate in her classes, when she doesn't want to speak a lot. And uh, when the next day comes, she calls me and says, you know, we, we have such a great teacher, even though we say uh, him that everything is fine, but, she, but he always comes and says, well, I know that something is not right about you. D just remember, you may anytime come and talk to me. So I think in their class were about six children from Ukraine in Canada. And well, my daughter, she appreciates uh, teacher support very, very much because, well, I understand that I cannot provide it, that support for her and she living so far away. Well, she, she usually is afraid what's going on here. And so all the support you provide to the children, it's is so, so important because even living in a kind of safe space a safe environment they still think about their families homes relatives who are who stayed here and one more example was when actually i was shocked i thought well she she now she's there with their father and i stayed here with parents um uh, so and they had some paper to do and well, the due time for the paper was the 24th of February. And she said, you know, mom, I don't know how I reacted, but my friends told me that when I heard the date, um, the tears come from my eyes and I was, and my face became red. So just thank you. And thank you for, to all of you, you know, uh, even though my camera was off, I was present, I was listening to, and well, I couldn't, you know, keep silent without telling you how, how it's important for our people to, to, to have support, to feel support um, in every, every way we can get it. Thank you. Maria, thank you. Katarina, can you unmute and translate for me, please? Um, sure, I can. Hello, hello. Everyone. I'd like to say a special welcome to um, all the Ukrainians who have joined us in the last few minutes. Я хочу дуже привітати українців, які приєдналися до нас зараз у ці хвилини. I'd like to say thank you to Katerina for extending the invitation to our Ukrainian friends. Katerina, так за запрошення також наших українських друзів до участі в конференції. We are going to start with consecutive interpretation now here in the main room for the next session. Отже, у нас зараз буде послідовний переклад на наступній сесії. Ми залишатимемося в головній залі. And then for after that, um, after the next session, we will ask all the Ukrainians uh, to go to the language channel for simultaneous interpretation. 
Але після цієї сесії наступне буде відбуватися із синхронним перекладом. І на перерві ми проінструктуємо вас, як доєднатися до каналу синхронного перекладу. What I would like to do now is open the breakout rooms if anyone would like to continue the conversation with Angela about her amazing work or if the Kashi group if I shut you down too early you can go back to talk to Kashi. І зараз я відкрию спеціальні Zoom кімнати, де можна продовжити спілкування з Ангелою або Каші. And then I'd like all of us to take just a two minute, three minute stretch break, breathing break, and um, Maxim and Andriana will get organized to start our next presentation. Зараз ми зробимо перерву на дві-три хвилинки, щоб потягнутися, відпочити, зорієнтуватися, в той час, як Максим та Андріана також підготуються до uh, своїх виступів і презентацій. Angela, before I open breakouts, is there anything you would like to say? Any last words to the group? Yes. Thank you so much and um, for listening and, and caring also about the students. It's very important. And I, I would really be curious. I don't know if, if, if the teacher or you said some pedagogics in this group uh, can just drop me their uh, address, maybe email or whatever, so we can maybe get in touch. Yeah. That would be wonderful. And Yelena, I saw your question in the chat. Maybe you can go to the breakout with Angela and continue the conversation. Mm -hmm. Katherine, I didn't let you translate, Angela. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, I will open the rooms and let's all just take a, I'm going to turn off my camera and just stretch and um, Maxim and Andriana, I welcome you getting organized and we'll start in just a moment. And Maxim, your presentation will be first. Добре, отже, Неса, зараз є буквально 2-3 хвилинки, після чого ми почнемо наступну сесію, і першим буде виступати Максим і надалі Андріана. 